So, I do a lot of 3D printing for what I do. And I have seen way too many people driving themselves crazy with a simple thing. Simple thing is getting your print off your build surface, off your print surface when it's done. I got a way that works really extremely well. I'm going to show you how to do it. Very simple. It's very easy. So you can get back to making cool ass things like this with your printer. I'm going to show you right now. Maybe even if you've been printing for a long time, has a horror story. Either they've experienced themselves, or they found online, they found on a forum. I see these all the time. And the horror stories involving the 3D printer isn't the from the noise or your electric bill or your spouse when they see your bill from ordering filament online or anything else. But the horror stories are always in pictures, and the pictures deal with things like. Well, pictures all deal with when users run into one of these. And if you've got a printer, or you bought a printer, your printer came with a scraper like this. And you see, I don't use my scraper that came with my printer for doing what they intended it for. This is a terrible tool. Okay? It's a terrible tool. I'm going to tell you why. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen online pictures of somebody who is trying to take their print off their build service on their printer and remove it. They're scraping, they're scraping, they're scraping with this thing, and then the print lets go. Scraper meets the hand, scraper meets the thumb, the palm, the wrist. I've seen many of these pictures of people freshly back from the emergency room or the urgent care center with stitches in their hand and big bandages and all wrapped up. It's silly. You don't have to do that. This is supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to lead you to go to the ER or to the urgent care or to the doctor or crying to your mom or whatever you need to do after this thing hurts you. Okay? Many people are fine with doing it that way, okay? But a couple reasons why I don't like this outside of the obvious safety issue and impaling yourself with this is a couple things. One, we know that one of the most difficult things or the most tedious parts of printing, other than the time that it takes to print something, is leveling the bed. Now, some people have printers where the bed, automatic, the bed leveling is automatic. Fantastic. Awesome. However, you don't have a printer that has automatic bed leveling. Going to remove prints, I guarantee you every time you go and remove a print with one of these guys, you are screwing up your bed level. That is why you are leveling your bed constantly. With the way that I do this, and I kind of happened upon it, um, I saw people using glass. And a lot of people use glass, and they love using glass to print on. It's great. You get a nice surface. However, things don't really stick to it very well. And then people are putting glue on there and hairspray and whatever other crazy concoction, ABS, ABS slurry, and putting that on there to get things to stick. You don't have to do that. Masking tape. Oh, my God. Okay. There's so much junk that people use to try and get their prints to stick to a completely clean surface like glass. Glass, the other thing about glass beds, when you put a glass sheet onto a bed and you take it off, you still have the same thing. You're scraping, you're breaking the glass. I've seen plenty of people hurt by that too. So all this crap, the scraper, get rid of it. The masking tape you're putting on your bed. Get rid of that too. You don't need it. All right? This is what I've been using now, and I have done a hell of a lot of printing with my printer. Okay, let me take a look. My timer says my printer has been running for 112 days and has nearly 12,000 meters of filament that's gone through it. So I've used this thing a lot. I've been doing this the same way basically since about two weeks into having this printer. I've printed an entire shore trooper costume. I've printed props like the blaster behind me. 
I've printed a BB-8, I've done tons of stuff, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours on this printer doing things this way. I started out with the masking tape, I started out with the scraper, realized it's stupid. Okay, so when I was at my local hardware store, uh, big love to Menards if you live in the Midwest here, I live outside Chicago, uh, I was walking through there and got by the glass section and I was thinking, oh, should I try the glass like people are doing and everything and yeah, I don't really want to do that. So I was looking at a couple things. They have plexiglass um, available in glass with most hard, in most hardware store centers um, where people are going to get their glass cut. But if you look hard enough in most of your home improvement centers, you will find this. This is not plexiglass, okay? This is not regular run-of-the-mill plexiglass that you buy for, you know, a less than a dollar a sheet this size. This is Lexan. Lexan is a high-impact extremely tough plastic glass substitute. It is used in bulletproof applications. It is used in tons of different things. It is extremely strong, extremely resilient. So what I do with this is this Lexan sheet is cut to fit the print bed. It's used just like the glasses use the binder clips or whatever kind of clips you like to use and you clip this to the bed surface. You don't have to put hairspray on here. You don't have to use the masking tape. You don't have to put glue on here and get your kids glue sticks and go steal those or anything else. You print right on the surface. No glue, no tape, no hairspray, no pain in the ass. None. Very simple, very straightforward. So I'm going to show you in a minute here. I've got a couple of video clips of me taking stuff off of the printer, and I've got a print that's finishing up. I happen to be wearing the appropriate shirt for today. I'm working on some Chewbacca bandolier boxes for uh, somebody and print some of those out. Now, what you want to do with this, the best way to do it, obviously, is to let your print cool back down. Um, I use this and have done it with ABS. I print primarily in PLA. I have not tried it in other materials with the exception of a couple flexible materials which it works great with. Um, but ABS with PLA it works fantastically. Fantastically. Is that a good word? It's a pretty terrible one. Anyway, cut that shit out. So we're going to let that cool down for a minute. You let your printer cool down, you let your piece cool down. Notice one thing as this is cooling down that the build surface that you printed on now, just like when you're doing glass, is completely separate of your machine. So instead of having capped on tape or masking tape or whatever else people are sticking to these surfaces, build tack, whatever, you are not trying to remove a print from your actual bed on your machine. You are not torquing the hell out of that print bed. You are not upsetting the springs for your leveling. You are not screwing up your leveling. I hardly ever level my bed. It's probably been four months since the last time I leveled the print bed on this thing. I don't need to do it because I'm not upsetting that when I'm removing my prints. All right, so here's where all the talking stops and I show you why this is amazing. Okay. Now keep in mind, I've done this with everything that I've printed in nearly two years from the baby Groot that you've all printed, that you've all seen. Love that little guy, by the way. Um, from that to my Shore Trooper to this E22 Blaster here to my BB-8, which I'll finish sometime eventually. Um, all have been printed this way. And the people that I have met and helped out with their machines, I have shown them how to do this and told them that this is the way to do it because it is the best way to do it. So, get your print on the machine, it cools down. Now, Lexan is a flexible material, right? Does your glass do that? It might one time and then it shatters in your face. Lexan is flexible, okay? 
So we go to remove this. We don't need the scraper. We don't need anything else. All we need to do, and listen for the sound. We flex this. And that's the sound you hear. Pop comes your print. There's Lexan. Only thing left on here is the outer ring that the printer lays down before it starts on the actual piece. Here is the piece straight off the surface. A smooth finish on it. Not rough, not torn up. And the print's off. The print's off. The machine is still leveled. I'm ready to go again. Take my Lexan, put it back in on the print bed. Use my binder clips. Attach it back down again, hit print, I'm going on to the next one. So, hopefully this was a helpful thing for you. I have used this again with PLA, with ABS, with flexible materials at print bed temperatures up to 110 degrees Celsius. So, if you print at higher temperatures than that, I can't speak for anything as to how well it works or with different materials because I haven't used it with that. If you end up using it with different materials, using Lexan sheets to print on, let me know how it works for some of the newer materials that are out there. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. If this helped you out, fantastic. If it did, thumbs up would be appreciated. Subscriptions, always loved. Down in the comments, I'll have some additional information for you, too, as well. So, get back to printing. I'm going to get back to mine, get some of my projects done in the shop here today while I have some time to work on them. Until next time, I'll see you. Thanks for stopping by.